Welcome back to Mason Dixon Acres. Today we're going to be talking about pruning and trellising tomato plants. First, you need to know whether your tomato plants are an indeterminate or determinate variety. Determinate varieties grow to a determined size and all of the fruit ripen at once, whereas indeterminate varieties are more of a vining variety and they continue to grow and produce fruit throughout the season. This is going to result in you having tomatoes that ripen at different times, but that is one of the differences. Now you don't actually need to prune determinate varieties. These have a good way of managing their own size and only growing to that predetermined size, but you do want to prune indeterminate varieties. The two main reasons why you should prune your indeterminate varieties are for plant overall health and for fruit quality. If you allow an indeterminate variety to just keep growing and produce new shoots all over the place, what happens is that those new shoots are very susceptible to insect damage and your aphids that are in your garden or hornworms are going to go after that new young growth. The second thing is that by pruning back those plants, you're going to help with airflow, which also can help prevent diseases such as blight. Blight can spread really quickly on a plant and so by allowing more airflow, you're preventing it from even showing up in the first place. There is one thing you need to consider. If you live in a region where you get a lot of sun and a lot of warm temperatures, you may want to consider pruning back less than someone who's in an area like I am, which is in Pennsylvania. Your tomatoes can get burned from the sun and also the plant can get burned from the sun. So just keep that in mind when you're pruning. The second thing that I mentioned was the fruit quality. As I mentioned, the plant will continue to grow and produce all these new shoots and it's putting a lot of energy into producing all of that new growth. If you take away some of that new growth, what happens is that your plant puts energy in producing more fruit or just better fruit bigger fruit. So by pruning back your plant, you're encouraging the plant to put more energy into the fruit itself. These tomato plants here are all indeterminate varieties. I let them grow a little bit wild so that I could show you what they look like when you don't prune them. Most of these tomato plants are falling over on top of my plants in front of them, so it's important that today I get them pruned and tied up. I grab my favorite pruners. These are Fiskars brand. I've had these for, this is going on my fourth year. Highly recommend them. I'm gonna put a link down in the description so you can get them. I bought these on Amazon. I think they're only $13. So definitely check them out. They're worth it. They last a really long time. But now that I have my pruners, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Cut off all of the leaf stems to about a foot off the ground. This encourages more airflow and prevents blight. It's best to do this as the plant grows, but you don't wanna ever cut off too many leaves because if you do, it could stunt the plant's growth. If you notice any leaf stems that have disease on them already, cut those off as well. If you end up cutting any diseased leaves, make sure to clean your clippers because disease can spread through them. Once you've pruned off all of those lower leaves, you also want to prune off what are called suckers. Suckers grow between the main stem of the tomato plant and a leaf stem here. And we can see this little guy right here is a sucker. And basically what happens is this kind of grows into its own individual plant. In fact, some people pinch these off, put them in water and allow them to root. And then they plant those in their gardens as additional plants. All you have to do is simply pinch it off. Now, if the sucker is relatively large, you may need to use clippers. You don't want to damage your plant. But for the most part, if you catch them early, you can just easily pinch them off. I found some tomato hornworm poop on one of my leaves right here and I just wanted to point that out to you so that you know what to look for. It looks usually like a dark green, almost black color and this is a sign that you might have a tomato hornworm. I'm having a little bit of trouble pruning all of my tomato plants because you can see here a little bit, they are tumbling over on top of the plants in front of them. So before I finish pruning, I'm going to trellis them up and I'm gonna share with you our trellis design. What we have here is welded wire that we purchased from Home Depot. We had this leftover from our chicken coop run build and so we figured we'd put it to use in the garden. We mounted up this fencing using two T-posts on the side and 
some zip ties. This probably only took us maybe 15 minutes to set up and we used materials we already had on hand. You have a ton of different options when it comes to tomato trellising. You can use branches to make a teepee. You can use the cattle panel fencing instead of welded wire. You just have an endless amount of options. I've used this method for four years now and it's worked well for us. The only thing that I would change is because we have such a long distance here, I would probably add another T-post right here in the center. With this method, I end up having to tie up our tomatoes. They don't vine on it as much as I would like to, but I just use some leftover string that we have from our chicken feed bags and use that to tie up the plants. You could also just buy regular string uh, or use some twine. Pretty much anything would work. So let's go ahead, I'll show you how I do this. Some of the plants are already pretty much supported, but there are some that are gonna need some help. Okay, so this is a little bit difficult because some of my plants are facing forward. So first, I'm going to get myself some string, get ready here. Let's see. Where is the stem? Okay. Um, so this one kind of fell over and twisted itself. So I had to grab onto it. I have my string ready here. And I'm just gonna tie this up in several places. And then I'll go back and prune everything. Oops pinched off a tomato flower. Definitely a lot better to tie up the plants as they're growing, but if you're like me and you're doing it later in the season, you're gonna have to pull through some of the leaves whenever you are tying them up. And then you'll notice here, I actually have a tomato sucker. So I'm just gonna pinch that off. That left a pretty big hole, but the tomato plant should be able to heal itself. So you just kind of go through the plant, make sure some of these leaves get pulled through. Anywhere that you see disease forming, what you're gonna wanna do is cut off those leaf stems. Even if you can't reach the whole way, just cut off as much as you can. And already this plant looks a little bit better, but I gotta now tie up this side. And with the magic of YouTube, we now have some pruned tomato plants. This is definitely a lot easier to do throughout the season rather than doing it all at once like I just did. But I know that some of you may be watching this in the middle of your growing season, so I wanted to show you that it definitely is still possible. I hope that you really enjoyed this video and that you got something out of it. If you found it to be helpful, make sure to click that thumbs up to tell the YouTube algorithm that this was useful. Also, subscribe to our channel for more gardening and homesteading content. We are also building our own home, so you're going to want to check that out too. And I will see you next time. Hopefully, uh, I will have more gardening tips soon.